welcome back uh, this is Joel and uh, I'll be making a bunch of videos uh, for my friend who is just venturing into AWS right some of the basic services in AWS I'll be trying to cover them up and uh, create some small use cases and I'll try to configure them you know on AWS console right so um, it's not going to be a, a detailed in-depth theory uh, you know AWS session because you'll find a lot on the internet um, you know concerning those topics uh, this is going to be a quick uh, you know review of some of the basic services uh, and I thought I'll probably record it so that you know uh, it's probably gonna be useful for folks out there as well right cool that being said where are we so I have created a free account you can go and create a AWS account as well you can see the free account there are a bunch of uh, 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 you know advantages of creating a free account you'll get a lot of services you can quickly check that as well uh, AWS free tier I guess right so it's, it's gonna give you EC2 it's gonna give you S3 RDS and a lot of other services you know just be careful with the limitations though don't cross this because if you do that then probably you're gonna get a bill right so it's it's very useful for learning purpose right so this is pretty good uh, now now what do I do let me sign in right so uh, let's do that and in this video, probably I'll be just talking about uh, IAM, right? The Identity Management, Identity and Access Management Service of AWS. Let's log in. Uh, bits, please. 007. Okay, let's put in the password. I've really not done anything. I've just created an account and I've kept it there, right? So I'm, everything I'm going to do right now. So awesome. This is where we land. And what do we do after here? So we, like I said, we are just going to concentrate on the IAM service, right? Just before that, remember on the right hand side, you have an option to select your various uh, regions, right? Each region is going to have what we call as availability zones as well. So I mean, I've selected Mumbai because that's closer to me. And in Mumbai, again, you're gonna have multiple availability zones. Availability zones are nothing but your data centers, right? In those regions. Um, you can again get information about all of that on where so if you do AWS global Infrastructure, you'll probably find documentation on that right there you go as of now there are 24 regions 77 AZs if you want to see those AZs you can go down to the section you can click here and you'll get like for example in Asia Pacific the orange ones are the region so this is the Mumbai region and you can see there are multiple uh, availability zones here, right? So we have three availability zones in India, which is Mumbai, right? So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it uh, with respect to this. So let's go back. Let's do a bit of configuration. The first thing, right? First service which you always go about is uh, your, okay, so before that, uh, when I was talking about regions, so how, how does this region really affect you? Because every single instance which you create, right? Like for example, you launch a virtual machine in your EC2, You'll be basically creating in one of these regions now you have flexibility to create it wherever you want but i would obviously recommend you to create it in a region closer to you that way you're going to have low latency right but then there are some services like for example our iam service which we are going to venture now let me click on iam so when you click on that it's going to it's a bit slow i'm on mute okay cool so it's uh, the iam service when you switch to iam service you'll see that all the other zones are grayed out you only have the global zone here right that means some of the services, common services are all hosted in the global data center, but the rest of them are spread all, all across the world, right? Awesome. Let's do this. So in this video, we're basically concentrating on IAM, Identity and Access Management. Uh, so why are we doing this? You saw me logging into my AWS, right? I had to put a big email and, and a password. So that is my root user, right? And you shouldn't ever, uh, be logging into your console using root right because uh, you're basically uh, or let's say you want to give this instance to someone right you want to share it with your friend and uh, uh, like for example i'm creating this instance for my friend and when i give the instance i wouldn't want to give him my email id and my password right or the email id to log in so uh, it's always good to kind of create users right who and give different permissions for each of the users that's what we are going to do right so um, the first step right is by default done so you don't have to do anything we have created our root access keys delete the root access keys so that's being done automatically you don't have to do anything so we'll go from the second part which is what 
managing MFA. So it's asking me, do you want to activate multi-factor authentication, right? And probably I'll do. I mean, uh, uh, multi-factor authentication is more secure, right? So I'm going to click on manage. And uh, here it's giving me multiple options. Let me go to MFA again. Let's say activate MFA. You have multiple options here. You can use like a hardware key like YubiKey, right? You probably know what YubiKey is. It's pretty cool uh, uh, device, right? Uh, which provides you that multi-factor authentication. But I'll go with the app. Right, a virtual app because you know I work with I work for Cisco and we have a very cool multi-factor authenticator app which is a Duo. So I'm gonna be using that. So uh, we are gonna click on virtual MFA device. Continue. Now it's going to ask me for scanning a QR code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my phone and I'm gonna go to Duo. Right, you can install Duo as well. Right, it's a multi-factor authenticator app. You can use actually anything. You can use probably a Google's authenticator as well. I think you probably have one for Apple as well. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to click on show QR code. And now I can probably, uh, you know, authenticate this guy. There you go. So uh, now I'll have to put in the MFA code, right? I scanned the QR code and my phone is telling me to plug in the authentication. So it's going to be nine. Okay. So anyway, I can tell it out loud. It's going to change every minute so that should be fine so you can have a look at this so in five right and uh, i'll have to wait for this to time out so that i can get the second code so it requests you to put in two subsequent codes right uh, so i'm going to put the second one which is seven two nine five one six there you go done so i'm going to say assign and you can see we have successfully assigned the virtual mfa that looks good so we have done with the mfa part what do we do next? Let's go back um, to where? Let's go back to my dashboard. And you can see this got greened out now, which means we completed the second step. Right? Cool. Now we go to the next one, which is creating IAM users. So let's say manage users. Right? And here I'm going to create a user. And obviously, I'm going to create something called bits, please. Right? The user is going to be called as bits, please. And uh, what do I want? It's asking for an access. I'm going to give programmatic access, right? And I'm also going to give AWS console access. And under the console access, it's asking me what kind of a password do you want? I'm going to say auto-generated password, right? Okay, so auto-generated password. And uh, that looks good. So I'm going to go to the next step. So here it's going to ask me what kind of permissions do you want to set? So I'm going to, for now, because I'm just creating one user, so I'm going to give attach existing policies and there are some default policies I'm going to give the administrator access policy right so what I've done till now I've created a user and I've given him the admin uh, policy and I'm going to click on next next and uh, looks good I'm going to say create user and this is where you need to be careful always make sure either you send an email so that the password gets send your email or you can download. So I'm going to download in my case, right? A CSV file gets downloaded. And with that, we should be good, close, right? So let's go back to the dashboard and we should see the third section also checked out. So we did that. Now we'll go to the manage group. So what happens in manage group? So till now we, did, we created a user, but what if you want to create a big set of users, right? Let's say you are, you're creating a lesson for a bunch of people in a class, right? So, and you would probably have, say, 10 students. So you want to create 10 different accounts for your students. Now, it's very uh, tedious to create every single account. And I mean, it's tedious to provide permissions to every single user. So this kind of helps you with that, right? So we're going to create a create group. I'm going to create the group and I'm going to give the name as admin. And once I have that, I'm going to go to the next step. And what kind of an access do I want, right? So because it's an administrator, I'm going to give the admin access. I'm going to say next. Uh, everything looks good to me, right? So I'm going to say create group. So I just now created a group called admin, right? And this guy has the permissions of admin. Now what I'll do is I'll go back to this um, uh, users, right? Uh, let me see. So I'm here. Let's see. So uh, let's actually go back to the groups and click on the group which we just now created. And what I'll do is, I'm going to add users to this group, right? 
and which user I'm gonna add. Remember, I've created a user called bits please. I'm gonna add that guy to this group which I just now created. I'm gonna say add user. Right? That looks good. Now, um, what I'll do is let's go back to users, right? Remember, we have created this user admin. And if I click on this guy, you'll see there are a bunch of permissions here, right? Now, I really don't want this permission here because I've provided the permission to the group directly. So I can delete this. I really don't want this. I can detach, right? So I've already provided the admin access uh, or the administrator, uh, you know, uh, policy, right? Or the permissions have been already attached to the group, right? And you can see here now that I've created the user bits, please. You can see under the group section, you can see it is uh, part of the group called uh, admin and it already has the permissions which is admin access so this is really helpful right now i can simply um, i can create any number of users right and go i can go on attaching the group called admin so that everyone will get the corresponding permissions i don't have to attach this permission every single time to every single user so that's the use of going for users i mean it's that's the use of going to groups instead of users right using groups all right, so what else, what else? So um, I think this should be pretty easy for my friend. Let's go back and see if you have done everything. Okay, there's one more thing. So the policy, it's asking me to manage the password policy. So I'm gonna create some policy and I'm gonna say what? So I'm gonna say allow the user to change their own password, obviously, something which is important. And I'm gonna say enable password expiration, but I'm gonna, I don't know, increase this to something like 365 days right uh, that should be fine um, and I'm gonna say save changes yeah good looks like we've got everything we need and uh, yeah I think that's pretty good guys uh, anything else okay let's go back to the dashboard now and see if you have done everything look we have completed everything we have got 515 here uh, this particular URL can be used to directly log into my console but you see um, it's a bit weird right with some numbers which I'm probably not gonna remember so I'm gonna customize this I'm gonna let's see if I can directly put bits please is it available looks like it is available so I'm gonna say yes create ah someone has already taken it okay so I'm gonna say oh, bits please 2020 probably yep there you go that's available so um, uh, that's that's going to be the URL using which we can log in now right so I'm gonna sign out of here, right? So give me a second, right? So I'm gonna log back in, right? So I'm gonna say, already, uh, I can now directly log back in using that URL which I copied, right? Bits please dash 2020 sign in, right? There you go. I can even bookmark this, right? Because in future I can probably directly go in through the AWS management console here. And uh, now look here the the alias or the account alias which we created has directly populated it. You don't even have to uh, write this down, right? Uh, because it's already that. The bits please username is what would go here. Remember we created that user and the password. What's the password? We never set the password. Remember that CSV file which we down downloaded here. This one, the CSV file. You open that. I've opened it on my other win other screen here. So I'm gonna. Open that and that's going to give you the first password. So I'm going to paste that. I'm going to say sign in. And it should log me back in. Now it's going to say I have to change my password. So I'm going to put the old password and change the password to something easier which I can remember. There you go. So I'm going to say confirm password change. Right. Awesome. This is good. So we have logged back in. Uh, let's go back and check our IAM. Everything should look good. Right? There you go. Everything looks good. Um, so we have we have done. So we have done. Actually, we have activated the MFA for root account, right? We could actually check that out as well. Let me do that. Let me sign out of here. And let me log back in. Right? This time, it's going to not just ask me password, but for my MFA as well, right? So I'm going to... Uh, let's actually... Uh, go back to okay give me a second okay so we are gonna say sign in using the root user email right I'm not gonna sign in as a IM user I'm gonna sign it as a root email right which is my bits place 007 I'm gonna say next and the password 
all right but this time it is going to ask me for mfa right so even if you guys kind of hack my password you will not be able to log in because this mfa is only available with me right it's going to come on my phone so i'm going to use that on which is on my phone which is uh 291279 there you go so i'm going to say submit and there you go we've got access so uh, we have done everything we needed to do with respect to IAM, right? So that's exactly, that's like a uh, bootstrapping our AWS account, right? That's what we could say, right? So we've, uh, we've got, we have deleted the root keys, right? With respect to the root account, right? We have activated MFA for root. We have created this IAM user, which is bits, please. We have used groups. We have created a group called admin and attached that user, which we created about to it. And we also created a, simple i am policy as well right hope you guys liked it that was a quick one uh do come back for more thanks bye